Hi, this is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you a template that I created to help with saving your patterns in different swatch sizes. I made this template uh, with the intent to help create uh, different swatch sizes that I can upload to Spoonflower. If you're not familiar with Spoonflower, Spoonflower is a place that sells print-on-demand fabric, home decor items, and wallpaper. You as an artist can create a shop and upload your patterns and have them printed on these various items. When you go to upload a swatch to Spoonflower, the DPI that Spoonflower uh, uses is 150 DPI. So a lot of times I will create my patterns in 300 DPI. So if you upload a pattern in a 300 DPI onto the Spoonflower platform, it is going to be uh, twice as big as what you expect. So if something is four inches by four inches at a 300 DPI, when you load it into Spoonflower, it is going to be shown as eight inches by eight inches. When you upload a design to Spoonflower, sometimes it's a good idea to upload different sizes. Items like a bed cover, like a larger scale along with wallpaper. But if you are, say, a quilter, you like smaller scale. So it can be a good idea to upload multiple scale versions of your pattern. So I've created this template to help with that process. So I have this template open here. We can see uh, multiple artboards getting smaller in size. Here in the layers panel, we can see the size of the artboard. And then this inch size is what it will show for Spoonflower. So this file is saved in a 300 DPI. So if your intent to use this document is not for Spoonflower, then I would just edit these to reflect what you would want at a 300 DPI. So if I were to edit this, I would change this to 24 inches, change this to 12 inches and so forth. But I included these values uh, with the intent to help with sizing for Spoonflower. So I just wanted to make a note there. If you decide to use this document for a different purpose, um, not related to Spoonflower with the 150 DPI uh, setting, um, then you might want to change these values here. So here I have a smart object layer. I'm going to go ahead and double click inside of it. And this is sized at 7,200 pixels by 7,200 pixels. Initially, I didn't use to design at the size, um, but I learned that it's better to design big and scale down. It's much harder to go from a small scale and to um, make it larger, especially when we're working in Photoshop, which are raster versus vector. So the base of this template starts with a 7,200 pixels by 7,200 pixels. But if your base pattern is different, you could always edit the dimensions of this by going to image, canvas size, and you can change your starter pattern here if you need to. Um, but for this case, we're using a 7200 pixels by 7200 pixels. Currently, I have a pattern chosen, but for demonstration purposes, let's go ahead and pick a, another one here just so we can see that it's updated. And how about we change our color as well? Let's go with another blue here. And then let's go ahead and save this, Command or Control S to save it. And then jumping back into the template here, we can see that this pattern has been updated in the various sizes. And so to save this out, you're gonna go to File, Export, and you're gonna go Artboards to Files. Uh, this is the preferred method because it will keep our 300 DPI. Um, Photoshop also has this feature export as. Uh, whenever I use this feature, it just saves it at a, at a 72 DPI and it does not keep the higher um, quality 300 DPI. So I, def I recommend going with the artboards to files. Go ahead and select your folder. And then we can set a prefix here. So we'll just go a blue chevron and then with a dash because it's a free 
prefix and then it will just take on the artboard name after. Here we want to include artboard content only. And then under export options, you want to make sure this is not selected include artboard name. Um, we don't want that to be checked. So we'll just uncheck that there and then we'll click to run it. And then it will go through each of those artboards and they will be saved in their own file. You'll get this notification that artboards to files was successful. We'll just click on OK. So if I open up that file here, we can see that it has been saved out. So if we start with the biggest, we have our 7200 pixels by 7200 pixels at 300 DPI here. And then we can see as small as one inch in terms of spoon flower is the 150 by 150 at 300 DPI. So we'll go ahead and exit out there. I'm inside of Spoonflower here. Let's go ahead and add a design. We'll go ahead and upload the largest and then the smallest one as well so we can see um, how they look. And then I'll just confirm the copyright here and then click to upload. Okay, our files have been uploaded. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the large scale here. Here we see it at 48 inches by 48 inches. If we look at wallpaper, it will show it as a 24 by 24 repeat. Then back to our fabric, and then we can click here to view all products, clicking into there. And then you can see the mock-ups here. And so in this case, the size would be too big for uh, some of these items here. It could be good for a duvet cover. Um, for curtains, but not every scale works well. And so that's why it can be beneficial to upload multiple sizes. So if we go back in here, let's go ahead and check on our small scale here. So this was the one inch by one inch, and we can see that's reflected here. So let's go ahead and look at view all products. Jump into that tab. Looking at the previews here. So this one inch, one inch wouldn't necessarily look good for some of these home decor items, but it could be good for quilting projects. So it's kind of a, so one of the challenges as a designer working with Spoonflower is they have a lot of different products. So the scale for one product wouldn't necessarily make the best scale for another. So depending on who you want to target with your shop, if you're just looking to mainly do larger things for wallpaper, or if you do want to meet the needs of uh, quilters, um, you would want um, the option of smaller scale items as well. And so this template will just help quickly save the different scales and then you can pick between the various options. So this template will just quickly help you save the various sizes. So depending on what size and scale that you want to upload to a spoon flower, you have the options there. Thanks for watching this video. If you want access to this template, I will leave a link in the description below where you can sign up for my email list to get it for free. You can always unsubscribe, um, but that is how I can send this file to you. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. This is Trisha from Lemon Paper Lab. See you next time.